I'm back and we're continuing to work on project number two for Math 033. This is the Yummy Graphs project. Um, if you are looking at the uh, graph or the project itself, we've done steps one and two and the beginning part of step three, we're on the very last graph, the side-by-side -side relative frequency bar chart. That's a mouthful, but it involves both of the packages at the same time. So in order to do this, we're going to kind of copy and paste our information from before. So I'm going to take my copy and paste. I'm going to copy for package number one. I'm going to take my uh, data like this. Um, I'm actually, I don't care about copying the, uh, well, no, I'll do it. Copy and paste here, copy, and then paste it somewhere down here. Convenient. So up here, this is not going to be just package number one. This is going to be um, uh, relative frequency data for package packages number one and number two. So I've got color. Now what I need to do is come up with my relative frequency, not the frequency itself, but the relative frequency. Uh, information. And so if I copy this for package number one, something weird happens when I tried to paste. Again, if I just paste by doing control V, copy with control C, and then paste with control V, I wind up with a bunch of gobbledygook. Because remember, these relative frequency cells are actually trying to calculate something based on a formula. And so when I paste the formula, it gets all whooper jawed and all mixed up. So I don't actually want to just standard copy and paste. What I want to do is copy, but then when I go down here, I can right click and then one of the options way up here under paste options, you'll see the first one will give me that kind of crazy looking uh, all kinds of errors. The second one, <coughs> excuse me, which is pasting values will give me what I'm looking for. And so if I just click on paste values, boop, like that, I wind up with the numbers, just the numbers. Notice these are the formulas are gone now. It's just the values that I calculated from before. Now, in order to make it look pretty, I can go through and uh, bold face the, the top and then put the borders around the bottom as before. But I'm going to now do the same thing for my package two data. I'm going to copy and then paste. And the other way you could do this is up in the upper left corner, the, the little arrow underneath the paste icon, you can see there's a bunch of options here. You can paste the values. You can paste the values and the formatting like this. So I don't have to redo my formatting. It's kind of nice. And so all the values that were there are now over here, not the formulas, just the values. And so I'm going to kind of make it clean it up and make it look pretty. And so I've got now my relative frequency for packages one and package two. Now the question is, how do I make a graph with that information? So what we can do now is select uh, our data and make a chart out of it. But in order to do that, we're going to try to delineate between our uh, package number one and package number two. And maybe for you, they're a small package and a large package. You can call this one big and small. You can call it package one, package two, but I'm going to uh, kind of delineate between the two. So I'm going to call this one um, small package. And then this one I'm going to call big package. And so I'm going to change my We'll format here. And so now when I select my data, it's not just the color and then one of these, but it's the color in both of them. And so by uh, selecting that information and then going to insert, just like we would have before, and column, and we again, we only want that 2D column. When I click on this, I wind up with a graph that shows each one of the colors and the small and the big package for each individual color, the information for each individual color. Now you'll notice we're going to have to clean up uh, some of this information. We're going to have to change the coloring. Uh, we're going to have to change um, maybe some of the, the, uh, the labels. Uh, we're going to have to give it a title. We're going to have to do all that stuff that we did before. 
So I want you to hit pause for a second if you're working on your data as well and actually uh, make those changes and try to tidy it up. And I'll do the same thing here. So you can see I took a little bit of time and played around with the background. You can do that by right clicking and I changed the color. But one thing I really can't do here is change each individual color. I can't make the red both red because they're both red for both packages. And I want to be able to tell the difference between the packages. And I want to be able to quickly see the differences between the two packages. And so I'm going to leave my legend in. I've got my title and I've got the the um, the category names, the color names for each one of the, the types of colors. The other thing to note on the side, I've got my uh, vertical axis here. This is relative frequency. So you can think of that as percent or percentage. So um, moving stuff around, you'll, you'll notice that I've kind of moved some of my uh, titles and graphs around. And I do this in order to kind of make space for myself. But you'll notice that every single one of my graphs, and I can kind of slide this thing over to be able to see my other graphs. Every single one of my graphs has a title. Every single one of the graphs is labeled properly. And if I look at my um, data, I've got my package one, package two, I've got my Pareto data, I've got my relative frequency data for my packages, and all the information is there so that my instructor, when I mail this to them, can quickly kind of scroll through and see all the information, see everything that I need to, or that they need to, to be able to verify that I did my, uh, I did the project and I did everything right. So the next step is to figure out what's next. Oh, actually the next step is because I keep forgetting to do it, is to save my file. Because I don't want to have to remake all these graphs. So once I've saved it, I'm going to take a look and you'll notice it says, remember to give all the graphs appropriate labels and titles. And um, then move on to step four, which is the analysis and conclusions. And so notice it says right away to insert your photos from step one, you can create a new worksheet tab and label it photos and then insert it on the tab. We already did that. Otherwise, email them to your instructor, depending on what they want. So it says, create a new worksheet in your uh, Excel file and label it analysis. So that's what I'm going to do, just like I did before down here. I'm going to click on insert worksheet and then just double click on it right away and type it in and call it analysis. And so now I have a new tab that says analysis. And then notice it says type in the following questions and answer answer each in complete sentences. So back in my Excel file, I can type in the questions and then write the answers underneath. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. Okay, with a little bit of magic, <laughs> I just paused and typed in the uh, questions. I hope I don't have any typos in there. But at the very least, you'll see that each one of the questions gets its own cell. I just typed in the cell and it blah, 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 went straight across. Now if I click on up here, if I drag the the um, column so that it fits that particular question, you'll notice some of these questions just don't fit in all those cells. So I'm not going to try to squeeze them all into a, uh, a you know a really tiny space, but I'm not all, also going to expand column A to go the entire screen width. I, I chose column A to be about this wide, and then I'm going to pick my cells right here, and I'm going to change one of the, the pieces of formatting. And um, there's a couple of different places where uh, you can get to this. And so up here, if you go into um, the uh, information uh, up here under alignment, you'll see um, merge and center is an option. And then up here, you have some options for uh, indenting and centering and all that other stuff. And there are a couple of places that we can change the format of the actual cells. In particular, if you have your cells selected, this option right here, you'll notice it says wrap text. And it, it says make all the content visible within a cell by displaying it on multiple lines. And that's what we want to do. So notice when I click on this, boop, then each one of these questions takes up multiple lines as if it's as if I'm, I'm kind of made the page that wide. But the nice thing about this is now that I can, now that I've done that, I can kind of stretch it out each one of the questions. 
um, as, uh, as wide as I want to make it. But that also leaves me space off to the side to be able to type my answers. So for example, compare your photograph bar charts with the ones you made in Excel. What are some, uh, some advantages, some advantages of each? You could answer that right here. And what you may want to do for each one of these questions, because they're the questions, you may want to make those in a, a different color font. So for example, make them in you know, a dark blue uh, color. Well, we want something a little bit more visible than that. How about this, dark blue. And then maybe all your answers, all these cells would be in red. I'm just making it up. So when you type your answer, oops, when you type your answer, you say, I think the cells, blah, 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 and you could answer like that, and you'll notice that it'll appear right next to it, and it'll be in a slightly different color, so your instructor will be able to tell uh, where your answer is. So that's a really nice way of kind of organizing your thinking as you go. Uh, don't forget, remember to always save as you go. And there are some other um, kind of organizational features. But at this point, you have all of your photos uploaded, you have your data typed in, your graphs made, properly labeled. You've got a bulk of the work for the project done. Now it just comes down to answering these questions and going through them and making sense of uh, the answers. And I'm gonna leave that up to you and the rest of the project is on you. Best of luck.